Um, just a little video on 3D printers. Again, rough and ready, and I'll just do these almost live in a bit of a walkthrough. What I want to do is just share um, the videos that I've got in the workshop and just kind of talk through them a little bit. Um, I'm going to start with the uh, Creality CR10 S5. This is um, one of the very popular ones that are in the group. And um, the reason it's so popular is the, the size of this print bed. This is a 500 millimeter by 500 millimeter print bed, which means it can print a single R2D2 dome in one go and can print most of the, uh, or, or all of the body rings in a single dome. So it's uh, it's made by Creality. Um, it's a Chinese manufacturer. Um, it's, it's, it's a good printer. It's cheap, it's relatively affordable, but it does need some, some obvious upgrades um, just to kind of get it to where I think it makes it a little bit more reliable. It consists of this bit here, which is just kind of the main processing unit. You've got some cables and then obviously you've got the hot end. This particular printer is what's called a Bowden printer. So the um, the filament is, is fed through to an extruder there and the extruder goes all the way through this to the end, to the hot end, which is a Bowden printer. Now Bowden printers are great because they've got quite a light um, print head. However, the drawback is that you've not got the, 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 the feed a direct feed straight next to the hot end. So it does create problems um, when you're doing flexible materials. Um, and also you've got to have a quite a heavy retraction to try and to stop it stringing. But overall, the printer's good. The, the upgrades for the S5 um, that I've done is first of all, this print bed. Um, this is a CT3 print surface. Uh, it just self-adhesive and sticks on top of the glass that comes with it. You can use the tape and, and the print on glass and all that, but I do find that this print surface gives me a good reliable print. The other print upgrade that I would highly recommend is a 0.8 nozzle on these things. It doesn't affect your resolution too much at all. Um, and particularly, you can still print 0.2 layers, but it, it massively increases the print speed. Um, so really recommend upgrading that. I've, I've got um, a Capricorn tube on there, which is a slightly upgraded tube. Um, and then the, the other thing that I've added is a BL touch, which is auto bed leveling. On this size of this print bed, it's a big old print bed, auto bed leveling just um, makes this into a completely different printer uh, when it comes to reliability. So not essential, but those 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 upgrades I think are well worth considering. BL touch, a decent, a decent print bed, um, absolutely. Now the thing that is essential is this. This is a, <coughs> sorry, this is a badge retractor. A typical thing you get for ID badges. Um, what the this what these always suffer from is the cable actually falling into the print when it's printing. So, badge retractor um, it, uh, absolutely essential. Other than that, it's pretty much stock. Now, the the other ad advice I would give you with um, with these is um, when you get jams and issues and all of these kinds of stuff, you can actually replace the individual hot end and or the the Bowden cables, um, but relatively low cost not much it's really expensive at all what you've actually got is an all-in-one hot end with the connector on it with the fans on it and it's like a two minute swip swap over um, and it's not much more expensive so spare part wise i've always got a couple of these in um, so that if it does jam i can just swap that straight out and you know if i can't clean the head or i can't unblock the nozzle swap that out and get up and running so a little bit of um hints and tips on the on the s5 uh, it is a love or hate printer but it does work relatively well i use pla plus on this so you can see on there it's Sunlu pla plus i don't tend to print pet g on there because i do get a little bit of warping at higher temperatures but um well that's the that's the s5 now my, my favorite by far i guess is the prusas this is the um this is the uh mark three uh they're just solid and they're reliable and they work i've got as you can see we've got we've got three of those um really not not a lot to go through to be honest on the prusa um cables i, I do mount these i've got some 3d printable cable holders I've, I've made these myself just quickly knock them up on fusion um so i can keep them keep cables all over the place but they're a good reliable printer the downside of these is the print bed's only 250 uh, by 210 mil so a little bit smaller on the print bed but they've got a magnetic bed uh, PAI um, print surface so everything that you need straight out of the box and they run and they're reliable auto auto bed leveling little sensor there and a whole bunch of things on the producers which just make them good and solid and as I said there's another one there I've just been playing around with these these are the um, the, the rough surface um, 
magnetic print beds and you can just buy these as spare parts and pieces and the smooth bed and both which are quite good i mainly print pet g on these these are all uh sunlu pet g again i quite like the sunlu products um and, it, and they are absolutely bomb proof bulletproof they just work that they, they are absolutely my, my workhorses and you can see you've got we've got a 2.5 version there and i've got two two mark threes now one thing that I would highly, highly, highly recommend is a product called 3D Lac. It comes in two types. This type, which is a 3D Lac, as a, as a sort of a spray bottle. And this type is more of a dispenser bottle. Same stuff, 3D Lac. Um, I use this on every single print surface. So even these PEI print surfaces um, and the uh, Creality print surfaces, I just give it a, a spray in between prints and what it does is it massively increases adhesion so that you, your prints don't curl um, or, or come up at the corners. It's, it, it, is, it is the biggest upgrade I've done to the prints since I've, uh, since I've prints. Superb stuff. And the other things that you can do is what are called helper discs, which are little discs that sit on the corner edges. You'll, and if you Google helper discs, again, it can help to hold those edges down. So there's, um, there's a couple of things really the, um, on, on there but definitely definitely do try the 3d 3d lac all the print on the producers really is pet g predominantly i have got some transparent pla there that i used recently for the lights on um, on chopper but mostly mostly it's pet g um, and obviously some of the specialist ones there's a little bit of flex flex on there now printing flex just a very quick worth worthwhile just talking about printing flex this this applies to every printer if you're going to print flex, particularly the lighter flex, so this is NinjaTech Cheetah, which is a, a TPU of 95, uh, which is which is a little bit harder, and then I've got some standard Ninja Flex up here, which is very very soft. When you're printing Ninja Flex, the first thing to do is release the pressure on the extruder. Take uh, on on here, you've just got a single screw. You pull it right back, and you literally just want it to just be able to hold and push that filament through. What happens with flex is if the, if the pressure's really hard, it'll wrap around and it'll get jammed in the extruder. So if you're getting extruder jams, make sure you undo and take off as much pressure as you can do on the extruder. Now it doesn't apply to Bowden's a heart much harder because they, uh, they haven't necessarily got the adjustments, but most direct feeds have got an adjustment on the pressure. Take the pressure off. The second thing with flex is ramp the temperature up. What you Worst, what happens with flex is it, it pushes down, for whatever reason it doesn't push out fast enough, it backs up, it kinks and then it just gets jammed. So if you've got a nice hot, hot end, I tend to go 5 degrees or 10 degrees over what the, um, what, what the manufacturers recommend. You've got a nice hot end, it'll flow through. Um, you can reduce or completely remove the retraction depending on what you're printing. I tend to print things like tyres which are circular, so retraction doesn't really make much difference. Um, so pull back on retraction, pull back on pressure and bang the temperature up. And the last thing, the last thing is print it really, really slowly. However slow you sent it, set it a little bit slower. Um, I tend to find if I reduce the pressure, print it really slowly and hot, then I have no issues at all with flex. I can print it all day long. One caution retail with flex and with PETG to a degree is on PEI surfaces. Again, I use this. It provides a bit of a barrier between the, the, the flex or the PEI in this surface. If you print flex onto, um, onto a PEI surface or even PETG onto a clean PEI surface, it can often stick to the point where it can't remove, and in some cases it can't actually remove the, the coating off the bed. Um, these, these are interesting, the rough ones that I mentioned before. What, what happens as it cool down, it literally pops off. It's really quite, really quite interesting, so have a little play with that. So they're the three printers that have now the last one that I've got here is the Elegoo Mars uh, resin printer. Um, resin printers are very different. They're fantastic for very small detailed parts. Um, the surfaces, I don't know if you can see on that little print that we've got on there, the surfaces are beautifully smooth, absolutely perfectly finished. The drawback of resins is they're quite small. The print bed is, is very small, as you can see, compared to uh, to that and certainly compared to the, uh, to the S5. Um, but for small detail parts and greebles are fantastic. Um, I don't use it every day. I probably don't use it every week. Um, I just use it very, very occasionally when I want to do small and detailed parts. But it's a really kind of handy printer to have. Um, I use, I, I tend to use this stuff, which is the water washable polymer resin. Um, 
What you've got to be careful with this is you don't leave it in water, otherwise it can sort of crumble a little bit. You clean it, you dry it, um, and then what you've got to do is um, put it under ultraviolet light to cure it. The, the drawback with, with resin printers, as everybody said, really is a little bit messy. Um, but yeah, so I thought that was useful, just a quick quick overview on the video on, 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 on my printers and just some of the thoughts and tips around how you get the best out of it. Um, but again, I'm not particularly promoting the product, but I've got to say 3D lac is superb. Even on the, um, on the CT tree um, surface, it is outstanding. So there you go, a little bit quick, quick, quick overview on 3D printers.